there's a story of a young novice who gave a Dhamma lesson one time to an older monk who had been very proud of his scholarship but had no experience meditating. Because he was so proud, none of the monks would teach him. When he finally decided he did want to meditate, so he finally came to a novice. The novice said, okay. First he tested the monk's pride, told him to go fully fully robed down into the pond. He did. He said, okay, come back up. Out. He did. He did that two or three times to make sure that the, the monk really was genuine in his desire to practice. And then he said, well, here's the problem. There's a termite nest with six holes, and there's a civet cat inside the termite nest. How do you catch it? We close off five of the holes, and then you pay careful attention to the one. In the same way you said meditate, you close off your five senses, and you pay very careful attention to the mind. What's the mind doing right now? As Buddha said, we tend to set fire to the things we look at and listen to, and all the way down the line, and to the things that we think about. It's as if our minds were flame flowers. Flame throwers. Everything we look at gets set on fire. Either we like it or we don't like it. We're afraid of it. We have some emotion around it. Things can't be neutral that way. And when you're setting fire to everything like this, you're not safe. So close off the fires to those five senses and focus on the fires in the mind, because that's where the fires are coming from. The problem is not with the sights outside. They're not there to give you lust or to invoke your anger. Your mind is looking for trouble with these things. So you want to see where does this fire come from? And then as a meditator, you decide you want to become a fireman, you put it out. And as with any fire, you want to make sure you put it out when it's still small. Don't wait until it's burned everything. So get very close to that moment when you look at something and there's going to be a reaction. And you put out the fire right then. And you find that you live in a very different world this way. It's not all burnt to a crisp. You live in a world where you look at something and you can think about it clearly. Is this good for something? Is it good for a good purpose? If so, okay, you can use it for that purpose. If not, you can put it aside. And that way you see many things that you don't like actually have a good purpose. Many things you do like may not have any real purpose at all. You learn how not to take your likes and dislikes and make them the arbiters of what's worth your interest and what's not. You've got to keep careful to watch over the mind as you go through the day. This is where it's important to practice restraint of the senses. And this is how you do it. As soon as things make contact, you look to make sure that you haven't set those things on fire. And if there is a fire, you put it out. And then you can live in a much better world. A world where you're safe and where other people are safe from you.